So I did the art style challenge before, the challenge in which you take art styles that are very different from yours and then try to replicate them. People liked that video. I liked making that video and I said that I might do it again sometime. And then I didn't, but now I shall. In the first video, which you don't need to see to watch this one by the way, I kind of focused on 2D styles of drawing cats, pretty nice, pretty chill, the only one that even remotely stood out from the crowd was the Wii style, which is 3D but still very very simple. But I ran out of those easy styles in the first video, so this time it was time to up the game. It was time to draw 3D furries. Little known fact about me, I have very little experience in drawing furries. Most people do not believe this, but it, it is true. But what better time to learn than the present? So, starting off with... Cats 2019 was actually a style that I wanted to do in the first video, but I ended up chickening out because I just couldn't muster up the mental energy to do it. Apparently I have become stronger at least. I would say that the defining features of this style are the human body, the human eyes, the human nose. Guys, it's, it's just a human with fur over it and also with a weird snake-like tail and cat ears. That's it. <laughs> I had a blast drawing this. I feel like I can't talk about the Cats 2019 art style without talking about my thoughts on the movie itself, which I have tried to make a video about multiple times, but I just always have too much to say, so let's keep it brief-ish. I love this movie. I, genuinely, I, I own a DVD copy of this movie because I just can't believe that it exists. Like who, wh what company looked at this concept and thought that it would make them money? Who, who on earth was this movie even made for? Like what's the demographic? <laughs> me, I'm the demographic. This movie made me cry real tears just from the sheer horrified confusion when I first saw it in the theaters back when we could go see movies in the theaters. And that is more of a emotional response than most movies can bring out of me. So <laughs> kudos to you, Cats. 2019. I would not want to live in a world where this movie doesn't exist. Oh, oh yeah, the art style. I also made the style of the original musical for this video, but now that I think about it, it's not really an art style. And also the recording got corrupted, so yeah. But at least now you can look at that and try comparing it to how I did the 2019 version. I made the stage musical Cat Crawl on the floor while I had the 2019 cat standing up because I noticed that just in general the, the Cats 2019 cats act much more human-like than the stage musical cats do. I also made the lighting and shading different in these two because I feel like while the stage musical relies a lot on these blue and purple lights, the 2019 version is mostly yellow. So yeah, that's the Cats 2019 art style, and also the Cats the Stage Musical art style, which technically doesn't count as an art style, but here it is anyways. I'm very happy with both of these. Oh, man. Next, I did the Minecraft style. I have three styles in this video that aren't, you know, like furry, anthropomorphic, so that's where the kinda in the title comes from. And this is the first one of those three. In this style, everything is block. Pixely blocks, you know Minecraft, I don't have to explain what this style is to anybody. You would think that drawing something that mainly consists of shim shimple, 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 what's a shimple? Simple shapes would be easy, but it really isn't. Because when you're drawing simple shapes, any mistakes you make will be way more easy to spot than if you were drawing something with more complexity. I decided early on that I was not going to just draw this one exactly the way that oscillates are in Minecraft, that I was going to allow these cubes and boxes to bend and curve a little. Because I can. And because the style is so distinct, I knew that it would still be recognizable even if I bent the rules a little. That being said, this is by far the only style in which I completely excluded the flower on my original character design because I just couldn't figure out how I could have incorporated that. Straight lines are hard to do. I struggled with this one a lot and I can't say that I'm completely happy with it, but hey, it wouldn't be a challenge if it was too easy now, would it? The next up we have B-Stars. 
Beastars is yet another 3D style, but this time, mercifully, it's made to look like it's 2D, which means that it's easier to draw in 2D than most of these 3D styles. I get to have outlines. So, when I'm working with styles from medias that do not only have cats, I obviously try to find references of how cats in particular look like in that style. But as for Beastars, I actually wasn't sure if I had ever seen just a regular old cat in this anime. And when I looked it up, I realized that, yes, there is a cat character, but I just hadn't realized that she was a cat, because in my opinion, she doesn't really look like one. It's a little unfortunate that I only get to reference one cat character, because that means that I don't really get to know how much variety there would be between different cat characters, and I don't really know how far I could go with my character design here. I figured that I should at least keep the head shape and body size roughly the same, but I changed the eyes and fur texture since looking at the wolf characters in this anime, I noticed that a lot of them have different fur and eyes. So these characters wear school uniforms, and I have actually almost never drawn a dress before. <laughs> Or rather, I have very recently been practicing drawing dresses, as prompted by a certain vampire character. But, I, but still, I'm not really experienced in drawing clothing, just in general. Fortunately, I had a lot of references at my disposal. The shading in this style is just simple cell shading, which is something that I am very used to from animation. So that part was really not difficult at all. I think I was able to draw my character in this style pretty well. I think she fits right in with the other possibly murderous furry anime animals. <laughs> All I wanna be is someone who gets to see a giant wolf. So next I did the Steven Universe style. The other one of the two originally 2D styles and yet another non-furry style. So this one was probably the easiest style out of this whole bunch, which makes sense since it's a style used in frame-by-frame -frame animation, it needs to be easy enough to keep consistent and to be fast to draw. Which unfortunately means that I had to reduce the details of my character. Again, this happened a lot with the styles of the previous video too. When going through my references, I noticed that Steven Universe actually seems to have two slightly different styles of drawing cats. The first one is from the earlier seasons, and has thicker lines, maybe a bit more personality, in my opinion. Or, or, you know, it could just be because this is not actually a cat, it's a space alien pretending to be one. The cats that appear in the later seasons have thinner lines, more detail, and they all pretty much have the same head shape. I ended up going for a mix between these two, taking the thick lines and slightly reducing the detail from the cats we see in the later seasons. And I'm really happy with the results. She is a cute little potato cat. And then there's Animal Crossing. This style is hard. I, I never thought that this style would be difficult to replicate, but it is. It's the same thing as with the Minecraft style. When the shapes are this simple, if you make even a tiny mistake, everyone can see it, and especially you yourself. Okay, moving on. This style is very cute and very flexible with this detail. I didn't really at any point have to stop to think whether it would allow me to have my stripes or my flower, because yes, there definitely is a villager out there that has those things. The only place where I had to switch things up was with the clothing, because the Animal Crossing villagers wear clothes! Now, I kind of wanted to give this character a piece of clothing that I own in real life that would match up nicely with the rest of the color palette. The problem is that in my apartment, I have a grand total of six different shirts. One of them is pink, which would just merge into the color of the fur, and then the rest are variations of black and white. I kind of wanted to give her my grey sweater, but looking at my references, I noticed that the striped cat villager here, sorry I'm not an Animal Crossing expert so I don't know their name, is wearing the same sweater that I have. And I don't want to be a copycat, now do I? <laughs> so I ended up going for the black sweater instead. And there she is, I guess she's like, cute? But this was definitely, again, one of the more challenging styles to get right. Next up... Okay, hear me out. I like the designs in this movie. I don't know about the Secret Life of Pets movie itself. The only thing I really remember about it is that the Finnish dub had put one of the puns through Google Translate or something. I Like, I just... They just directly translated it. And the joke didn't work. And the line made no sense. 
And I don't remember how long it's been since this movie was made, but I am regularly angry about that translation. That is the only reason I remember this movie. But the character designs, though? I like them. They are very cartoony, we have a lot of exaggerated shapes here, coupled with so, so much fluff. I like those things. So I knew right away that this was going to be one of the styles I would do in this video. My biggest struggle was probably just getting the proportions to be exaggerated enough. I had to tweak those a lot to make them match with the style. I also wanted to give my character some sort of an expression, since, you know, it's a cartoony style. I ended up making her look really <laughs> disgusted for some reason. I don't know what she's looking at, possibly the cat's 2019 style. Or maybe she's glaring at someone for staring at her huge fluffy chest. Drawing fur fluff though? It's fun. I love doing that, it's therapeutic. Did you know that humans are evolutionarily predisposed to loving fluffy furry things? But yeah, I don't know if I nailed this style, but at the very least, the drawing that came out of it looks really nice in my opinion. I, I really like this drawing. And here's the other 2D style out of this bunch. Honestly, if I'm ever doing this challenge again, I want to do more 2D styles and less 3D styles. This one is used in the game Night in the Woods. The furry characters, again, consist of simple shapes, which, fun fact, is because the main character of this story feels dissociated from the world and imagines people as animals because if they're animals then it's not as bad as we assure them in the It's a very cute, a very simple style. Which, again, sort of means that it's hard to replicate, but I think I did it well enough. I had to reduce the details of the design again, but really the greatest challenge was just not making her look too much like the main character, May, who is also a cat. You might notice that she's wearing the same sweater as in my Animal Crossing style, just heavily simplified. I think her shoes look like bread, and she's ugly. But yeah, I think I got this style down pretty well. <laughs> I saved the best for last. All the characters in this movie have the same head shape, so there's no way this was ever going to look like a cat. Also, for some reason, the one female character in this movie has hair? And she's supposed to be a lion, so, like, Joshua has a transgender mom, possibly? Trans rights? Well, I mean, either way, that meant that I also gotta give my character poop-colored hair to signify that she's female. Fortunately, I do have hair in real life, so I'm just gonna take my hair and try to imagine how it would look like if it was a poorly made 3D shape. Oh, and also, titties. <laughs> okay, is it just me or are these titties like really, really high? Like, I, I don't think, I think you should move them a little lower because now they're like, they're kind of like a re weird titty necklace that's under her skin. <laughs> or fur, I, I guess, they, they don't actually have fur animated, but I mean, I, I, I guess it's like implied or something. <laughs> Anyways, uh, flat hands, and dead expressionless eyes, and an awkward pose, and gray stripes, because why would you give your tiger character black stripes when you can just make them an annoying shade of gray? And of course, I am going to be shading with just black to really suck all of the color out of this drawing. And also do white highlights with an airbrush tool, because that's what we do here. And yet, no matter what I did, I just couldn't quite capture the energy of the original. Like, like this is... 